Hey guys, let's talk about using a die line and creating packaging artwork in Illustrator. So what you see here is a uh, typical gum package, uh, a little box, a little mini box that has little pieces of gum folded inside the envelope. And these are made out of a single sheet of cardstock, but they're cut and folded and manufactured in a particular way uh, to create the package for, for the gum wrapper. And I've taken the liberty of taking one, a piece of box art, and tracing it in Illustrator to create the outline. So if you took any package and just unfolded it, any box or something, you would get something like this. So of course, the, the most direct way to figure out how a box is manufactured is to take it apart, lay it flat, and start making measurements and figuring out how it's put together. Um, of course, this can be done on the computer or from, uh, uh, from your own imagination if you drew something on a grid. But here, starting with an existing package, uh, I was able to trace and outline uh, the cutout, the silhouette of the box itself. And you can see some of these things are labeled. There's like a glue panel, these light blue areas, kind of the, the cover area. And you can see how the top flap is attached to the back part of the box and so on. And there's even a little area here where it shows what would be cut so that you could have the little sleeve fit inside a little holder on the front of the gum box. So a lot of planning and design goes into making packaging boxes. Now, if you separate that by itself, this is what you get. This red outline represents the die line for that box. And so in the manufacturing process, what would happen is these boxes are printed on cardstock, and then there's a special machine that has a cutout prepared, the exact shape that's drawn here, and that cardboard cutout gets run through a machine and stamped and everywhere you see a red line will either become a fold, an impression like a score, or it will be a solid cut where the paper is actually cut away from the box. Then once the print and the box is cut out, it can then go on to another gluing machine where it's glued together and made into the box. So for you guys that are designing a, a die line and then eventually designing a package, uh, some package, package artwork, the first step in the process is determining the shape of your box and then creating the die line. Now, if you look at this file, what I have is I have a die line layer. That's where the red outline is drawn. And then I have an artwork layer. Once the die line is made, I have it sitting on an upper layer and I locked it so I won't disturb it. And what I would do is I would draw the package design underneath the die line. So let's say I was going to, you know, work on the artwork for this back panel. I would draw shapes and I'm working on the artwork layer. I would use color and whatever else I wanted, you know, to design the package, fitting it within the spacing of the die line. Also, you want to pay attention to where your edges are, where the visible edges are. You know, this area here would be visible because it would be the side of the box. This area out here that's tapered and folded, that's actually going to be glued inside the edge of the box. It wouldn't be visible. That's why on the sample, you can see that those are, are blue. They're not actually part of the artwork layer. But these other areas that are visible have information and detail. Also, when looking at a box in this expanded view, you have to kind of pay attention to uh, what is upside down and what is right side up. If I'm looking at this package, you know, this front flap and back area will be right side up, but this flap that's going to fold down over the front will actually be upside down in the flat design form. So if I have words or other important information in here, you know, like So I had a nice little title. 
that would actually have to be upside down for this box to work uh, when it gets printed. So those are some things you want to pay attention to as you're applying your artwork to the box. It's a good idea that your artwork extends beyond the outer edge of the die line. That's what we call the bleed area. So it's okay if your artwork extends into this no man's land because eventually that's going to be cut off and you want that. Again, paying attention to where your folds are, making sure that your artwork stays within those boundaries, but anything beyond the silhouette is, is fair game because that's going to become part of the, the cutaway and you want your color to bleed to the edge. So my advice is separate your, your boxes. Make sure your die line is sitting on a separate layer so you can refer to it as a template as you make your drawing. Keep your artwork on a separate layer so that you can modify it and alter it as needed um, using your die line as a guide. So for your projects, you're gonna submit this um, flat in this designed format so that you can show the die line over the top of your artwork. If we were on campus, we might be able to print these and manufacture these. Unfortunately, we're not able to do that. But if you have resources at home and you wanna print and then cut out with an X-Acto knife and get a glue gun and put it together, you can make a little package. All right, so hopefully that helps as you get yourself started on figuring out how to identify a box that's gonna work for your product design and then create a die line in Illustrator, drawing with the pen tool, tracing the outline and the silhouette, making your geometry and your precise lines work, and then using that as a separate layer, as a template for your artwork that you're gonna create underneath. All right, that's a little description. Talk to you next time.